Nagyan Black. Ah, Black. Ini siapa yang ini? Sir. Ini siapa? Bukan. Good morning everyone. So we are going to give you another two minutes. Another two minutes and then we'll begin. Good morning. May I have your attention, please? I'm going to ask you at this time to stand. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. We brought, we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the Lord. 
the name of the Lord. We will continue our service at this time. Reverend Robbins will really continue. Thank you and good morning again. And uh, you may be seated as I give some instructions before we actually start. On behalf of Pastor Robinson and the members of this church and the by extension, the community at large, we want to extend our condolences to the family members of our dear sister and friend. I am sure that the family members are feeling comforted by the fact that you have taken time out from your busy schedule to be here today to help to support them and to undergird them in this time of bereavement. So wherever you are from, wherever you are from this morning, in the community, outside of the community, we appreciate your company, the family members, and we want to assure the family that our prayers are with you and for you. Amen. With that being said, we are sorry again for the inconvenience. You know that it doesn't matter what, when we have funerals like these, the church is always packed. And for content, the church is not so big like many others. So we are sorry for that. Um, there are many funeral services that are being held today across Westmoreland, more so in the, these areas. So. The, oh, we were supposed to start at 10, and uh, but we are a little over in half an hour. We are supposed to be going to another funeral to participate in that funeral at Fort William. So persons who are going to be giving your tributes, we are asking that you be concise. So if you are going to sing, you sing. If you are going to... to say a verbal tribute, you say the verbal tribute. You cannot sing and talk doing those two. So we ask that we cooperate as best as we can so that we leave out of here at the earliest possible time. So again, we thank you for coming. Whenever you come to do your tribute, you are to use the podium. You will be given a microphone at the end of whatever you're going to do, your tribute, you will hand back the microphone so it can be sanitized and given back to the person. Amen? Amen. All of that out of the way, I'm going to ask you to stand as we do the opening. Amen. Amen. Oh Lord my God, when I
have been our dear friends who are our generation. We pray the whole time that our God will look up for the whole world. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to the saint. You turn to us, you mortal. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but in the evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days passed away under your wrath. We finish our years with amor. Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures, yet the best of them are but troubles and sorrow. For they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger, your wrath is as great as the fear that is your due. Teach us the number. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of hell. This is the word of God. That's me to Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And the wind of a snow white dove, peace and peace pure. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. You know, we're not doing this for every season of Russia not here in our but one thing we need to do is to borrow the songwriter's word and say, keep me true, Lord Jesus. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Blake is not here, so we will continue with open tributes. Three minutes each. Second lesson. Second lesson. Sorry. We could still take it after that but because it is on the program. I'm sorry. Second lesson, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 58, Simone Ellis, family friend. Amen. Thank you. And then we take the tributes, three minutes. Amen. Good morning, everyone. A reading from the Word of God. Reading in the book of 1 Corinthians 15, reading from verses 51 through to 58. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall, shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, that is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, my beloved virgin, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. A word of God be honored by saying, Thanks be to God.
Let me acknowledge the presence of Mr. and Mrs. Robinson, their pastor, a drummer, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. A pleasant morning. Um, standing here in solidarity with the family members and friends of a dear sister, is Mackenzie. And, uh, you know, I, looking at the picture here, um, I try to reflect. Um, I would have visited Miss Mackenzie several times, you know, uh, while, you know, in the, the division here. And uh, I found her to be a very nice, loving lady, Trovia. And uh, coming here after several times, and, and looking, in fact, looking back this morning to see grandchildren, children, grandson, and you know, it brings joy to my heart, you know. But you, you know what? We would have said that 2022 was a very was a year that you know comes with trials and tribulation and uh, coming on to 23 none of us would have known that we would have made it so what we have to say now is to give god thanks and praise to see a new year 2023 but i want to encourage the family members to stay strong. You know, the good book says that the Lord will not leave you comfortless. He will be comforting you people in time of your grief. But just to encourage everyone that God is still alive and, you know, He's working miracles. And we have to give Him thanks and praise every day because. I remember when I was much smaller, the only time we knew that somebody died would be somebody at very old age. But you notice now, it's Mackenzie's 65. Young woman, not true. Very young. And I've seen quite a number of persons, very young, passing. But God is good. And uh, we need to give him thanks daily. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I want to say, I will dearly miss Alric. Alric was such a good friend to me in the community. The community really lost the stalwart. Whenever you have anything or anything happening around, Alric will always be there to give you a helping hand and to make you laugh. And she's a friend of all the little children in the community. My sons and my daughter, they always ask me for her. And when she's sick, I would go and look for her. I used to call her and then sometimes she'd answer and I would go and look for her and share what little I have with her. And may God give you family members, you are all my families, strength to carry on. God promised never to leave us nor forsake us. So just be strong and believe that God will carry you through. I'm just going to sing a verse of a song. Things that I love. And who dare to my heart? They are borrowed, they are not mine at all. Because God will let me use that to brighten my life. So remind me, remind me.
participated already. We are continuing, and this time we take the remembrance from Ermin Porter Ellis, family friend.
that's how why I need you at funeral services. I'm sorry. I should be going through gently and kindly. But for me, it doesn't matter whether the person is a member of a church or not a member. She is not here. We are here and we have to put something back in the world before we go. So make joyful noise unto the Lord for yourself. Nobody can make joyful noise better than you for you. Amen. We are coming down nicely and Sister Blake is here and at this time I'm going to invite her to come. Good morning everyone. Good morning. I was planning to come out at church and if you have to have a dress, you want to pass that come to us and come out and we just come out now. I'll rebuild my voice already. We still come. And when I leave here you now, I have to go to the hospital because my pressure is well high. And you know when you hire what they hear you. So, help me. And we have a lovely gathering here. If all of us work to be in the land where we never grow down, we have nothing to regret. Before we do that, I'm going to be asking Sister Sonia Brown to pray for the offering before it is collected. Let us go ahead and pray. Let us pray. 
Almighty and eternal God. We come again in your presence, O oh God. Father God, we know you are here with us today. Although it is mixed feeling amongst the family, God. But Father God, you said, blessed are they that morning. You will be their comforter. Almighty God, we present to you the offering of your people, O oh God. Those that have to give and those who cannot stretch forth their hands, mighty God. We ask you, dear God, to bless them also. Sanctify it, that when we use it for the further end of your kingdom, it may bring blessings to us. Amen. So we do the hospitality hymn. Precious memories on sin angels. Say
and it will be coming from Alisa Johnson, Justice of the Peace. Jennifer started to develop complications 
hypertension, diabetes, which later see her eyes fading and become irreparable. She was in and out of hospital until she took her final breath on November 29, 2022. We cannot, we cannot lord thy purpose see, but all is well that is done by thee. Today we have to celebrate the life of Jennifer McKenzie as an exceptional mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, sister, aunt, family member, friend, and acquaintance of us all. So she has touched many lives in a positive ways, leaving each better than she found them. She left to mourn four girls, Carol, Alyssa, Erica, and Snowlo. Four boys, Garfield, Theodore, Michael, and Rodriguez. 20 grandchildren, seven great grand, and other relatives and friends. My sentiment is that she gone too soon. May her soul rest in peace. Johnson, and that was about the life and work of Miss Mackenzie. Amen. Amen. It's only sad that she did hear one, but we are left. The children, the children are left with that legacy. Amen. Amen. May the work that we have done speak for us. Amen. Amen. May the life we live speak for us. At this time we have floral tribute. It's from the grandchildren. Let's take them at this time.
today, the Lord of hosts is with us. Amen. Amen. And I just want to, on the behalf of the content assemblies of holiness, extend the condolences to the bereaved family. 
I am allotted a few minutes and I don't want to really waste a minute of it. So let me get into the word. Amen. I want to draw your attention to a psalm. Psalm 8. I know you are not in possession of your Bible, but I just tell you where I'm at so we, when you have the time you can read. So we'll be focusing on the psalm, but I want to um, highlight verse 4. It reads, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? Psalm 8, verse 4. Let us pray. Father, we bless you for this new day. We bless you because you have given us life. And we are here celebrating the life of our departed sister. And we pray in the name of Jesus. That as we meditate on your word, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will bring clarity, bring to us understanding, and cause that we will hide your word in our hearts, that we will not sin against thee. Be pleased to sanctif sanctify your word again. We ask these favors in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I thought for the next few minutes, what is man? What is is man. Man, my brothers and sisters, is compared to the frail things of earth. We are told that man is like grass. In the morning, he's fresh and green, but by nightfall, he with us. Even though at this time we are feeling so strong in our bodies. I'm, I'm just asking those on the outside that, you know, you just cooperate with us for the next few minutes. Hello, somebody can just get their attention, please. Asking them not to disturb us on the inside. So as I said before, man is compared to the frail thing of earth, grass. And even though we might feel strong in our bodies and feeling like those machines they have by the wharf, lifting the heavy containers, we might feel as strong as one of them right now. But think of it. We are as grass. We have but a limited time here. And we have to make use of the limited time we have here. Nothing is wrong, brothers and sisters, seeking to achieve anything lawfully in this life. Nothing is wrong about that. But at the same time, we have to balance our life. We have to remember that there is a creator. We have to, we have to remember that he is in heaven. And there's a word that they use to describe God. They say he is omnipresent. Meaning, his presence is everywhere. We hear the psalmist asking the question, where shall I flee from your presence? If I take the wings of the morning and fly to the utmost part of the earth, before you're there, and he said, if even if I make my bed in hell, behold, your presence is there. My brothers and sisters, it behoves all of us to pay attention to who we are and whose we are. We, we sing the song over and over. I am not my own. I belong to Jesus. Therefore, we will have to consider our purpose. 
for being here. Because none of us here today, we are here without a purpose. We need to know our purpose. And we need to fulfill our purpose. The songwriter reminds us, don't let me leave behind an unfinished task. I was questioned some years ago by a lady. She asked me, if one dies and has unfinished work, will it be possible for that person to come back and finish the task? I said to the person, I've never read it. I've never seen it. Once you die, the Bible says, when a man dies, his very thought perish. So now that you are alive, now that the blood is running warm in your vein, it's time to know your purpose and to fulfill your purpose. Because you, we only have a limited time here. The Bible tells us that we are appointed 70 years. But by reason of strength, we might live a little beyond. But Within those extra years, there is a little thing that we don't like. Pain. Pain. Once you are beyond 75, pain. And another thing that we don't like, and that is regret. Pain and regret. When we get to those age, because guess what happened? There comes a time when not even a mosquito you can kill. Can you imagine? You're alive, and you remember those days when you used to climb Mount Everest at rapid speed. But today, you can't even lift a fork or a spoon to your mouth. It Says, it says, my brothers and sisters, that in those extra years, we have pain and regrets. But hear what the word of the Lord is saying to us in Psalm 8. What is man? That God is mindful of him. Even though he's compared to the frail things of earth. God is taking an account of man and is paying close attention to mankind. Now, when we read in the book of Job, the word of the Lord says here in the book of Job that asking the same question, what is man? That you are mindful of him. And not only that, he says that you visit with him every moment. The presence of the Lord is always with his people. The eyes of the Lord are wide open. His ears are wide open to our cries. But you know what? Sometimes we see God as the paymaster. And that's all we see him as. The paymaster. When we have a bill, Lord help me. Monday coming is the deadline. Oh Lord, please send me some money. And as soon as we get the money, we don't care about the Lord until there is another bill. When you die, we have to give an account someday to this God whom we only see, some of us only see as the paymaster. He said he's coming back again with his hands full of reward and he's going to pay every man I want to share something with you some years ago in friendship pastor asked one sister privately to pay attention to all those who come to prayer meeting from January until December. So she has a little book with the names of all the members. So every prayer meeting night, if you are present, 
You get that ticket. At the end of the year, when it was revealed to the wider membership, many people said, No, sir. I come to prayer meeting more often. The day of reckoning, my brothers and sisters, it's not that what Jesus planned, but that which the church planned. And some people could not believe. Can you imagine? When Jesus will open the book. And I'm told another book will be opened. And we will be judged according to the things that are written in the book. You and I, we can't tell God no. That's what is written. Is written. And let me say this to you. It's not in the Bible, but I'm saying this to you. That one of the books that will be wide open is your conscience, is my conscience. Because I know some things that nobody else knows. You know some things that nobody else knows. And your conscience will still be alive on that day. And you can't tell the Lord no because it is written in the book and it is written on your conscience. So, even though we are compared to the frail things of the spirit, God is paying attention to us. My brothers and sisters, the psalmist asks the question, what is man that you are mindful of him? You are such a great God. You have created the heavens and the earth and all that are therein. Yes, you have done all these things. Yeah. Why are you paying attention to frail man? You know why? Of all the creation, God did not stoop down and breathe in them the breath of life. But the Bible tells me he stooped down, he breathed in man's nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living soul. You and I, we have a part of God in us. And that is why he's paying attention to us. All the mothers here today, you are paying attention to your children because a part of you is in all of them. You are not a surrogate mother. You are a biological mother. I am told that a, a surrogate mother will forget her child after 12 years. But you, a biological mother, even when you are lying on the bed and you can't move, whatever is happening to your child or your children, miles away, right here on your bed, you can feel it. God is paying attention to you and I because a part of him is in us. And that is why you and I have to take to, into consideration who am I and what am I doing here? How is it with you today? Can you conscientiously say, I am doing my best to make it in? I want to ask a question again. Can you at this moment conscientiously say I am doing my best to make it in. If you can't answer that question, the opportunity is yours to make right with God right now. The Lord bless you. the word of the Lord. Amen. I know what the Lord has spoken to some hearts. Let us stay heed to the word of the Lord. I'm going to be asking um, all persons who are not related to the Mackenzie's family to stand. You are not related. The persons who are related, persons who are children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, Nieces, nephews, cousins, you may be seated and the rest of us will stand. 
Quasi.
casi ni en de más ahí. No te casi tan de más ahí. Eric, Cara, no te casi tan de más ahí, Rita.
sir. We sing the other song. Some sweet day.
So we actually finished. So if you see flood put on, then now put on, you know. So we're going. So that's it. We are out.